Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, all over this sanctuary, tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, if the Lord has been good to you, tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. If the Lord has done something special in your life, come on, tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is great and great that you'll be praised. Amen. He's worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Come on, come on. Come on, she just got out of the hospital. Somebody ought to help her praise him. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that the Lord has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I never lost my hope. It's time for the people of God to hope again, to look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that your help cometh from the Lord, which has made the heavens and the earth. We just got to learn how to praise him. In the midst of what you're going through, God is still God. And there's nothing but absolutely nothing that takes God by surprise. Amen. Divine providence is at work. Amen. And we owe God a praise. I've been saying that for a number of years. We owe God a praise. For if I hold my peace, God is able to make the rocks cry out to him. Amen. We're so grateful to the Lord. Amen. I do honor my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for my here being. Amen. Thanking God for this blessed privilege. God don't owe me anything. It's a blessed, it's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. This is the house. The earth is the Lord, so we're still in the house of the Lord. Amen. To give God glory, to give God praise. Amen. To honor his name. We're so grateful to the Lord. God has been good to us. Amen. I want to say to our church family that amen. Concerning our association, we are in our 155th session of the Old Eastern Missionary Baptist Association. And when I leave here, I'm going there. But we're grateful to the Lord that God has kept us again, amen, been out of most of our service for over a year and a half, amen. But God still has been good to us, amen, and we owe him a praise, amen. Just want to thank the Lord for all that he's done, amen. I hope I don't make a mistake. But I thought I saw Sister Minor, grandson Jabrian, amen, drive up through here. Amen. I'm just, some of y'all some of, some of are getting older. Amen. And I, I, I mention his name because it, it just does me good, and Sister Minor, it ought to do you good that we live so our children and our grandchildren, at least if they're not in church all the time, they're stopped by the church. One, one songwriter says, stop by the church sometime. Something may be said. Something may be done. Stop by the church sometime. You'll never know that God is all you need until God is all you have. And you don't want to wait until you're laying flat on your back having to look up, asking God to have mercy on you. All right, we're going to go to the word of the Lord. Amen. And I got to fight again with the wind today. There is a word from the Lord, amen. We're grateful to the Lord, and I said we have to fight with the wind, but amen, we can't win with the wind. I'm just trying to adjust myself so I can navigate through this course. If I could get a few people, Brother Roderick, to pray for me, amen. Amen, we could deliver this word, amen, and be on our way. All right, let us go to the word of the Lord, amen, that will come to us out of the book of Romans, chapter number two. Amen, come to encourage the people of God, amen, and no matter where you go, where you look, there's trouble everywhere. Amen. But we are grateful to the Lord for God is good. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. We thank the Lord for all that the Lord has done, all that the Lord is doing. You that have your Bibles or your social media device, go with us. Amen. Uh, chapter number two, the book of Romans. Amen. Allow me to use the multi-text. And what that simply means, amen, that I'll read more than one scripture. Paul writes now to the church, amen, beginning at verse number one. And it reads thusly, Therefore thou art an inexcusable, O man, the woman, whosoever thou art, that judgest. Uh, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest does the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and does it the same, does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? 
And verse number four is so rich. Or despisest thou, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Somebody say long suffering. Long suffering. Not knowing that the goodness of God lead thee to repentance. But after that, after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient, continuous in well-doing, seek for the glory and the honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also to the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. Let the church say good. Yeah. Uh -huh, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. I really want to take my text from verse number four. Uh, Paul asked the church at Rome here, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of God, somebody said the goodness of God. Uh-huh, that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Let us bow our heads as we shall pray. Eternal our wise God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come again. Uh, calling upon your holy and your righteous name. Thank you, Lord, because you've been good to us. You blessed us and you kept us. Gave us sleep last night, oh God, with no trouble. Father, we thank you because you've loved us with an everlasting love. Pray now that you will speak through these lips of clay. God, we praise you. Allow the Holy Spirit now to come to be the honor guest, to turn the water into wine, O oh God, to lift the hung down head, to mend the broken heart, to set at liberty those that are bruised. Father, we thank you and we shall give you the praise, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And let every heart say amen. Amen. From verse number four, amen, it talks about forbearance, amen, and long suffering. I want to talk from the topic, the patience of God. Now notice I didn't say I was going to talk about me having patience or you having patience, amen, because most of us in this parking lot, if we were to be honest, y'all listening to me? Some of y'all listen to me, some of y'all ain't studying me, but I'm gonna say it anyway. But to be honest with all of you, amen, we, we, some of us have been at a point, amen, where our patience have run out. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in here. But it's here now that Paul writes to the church at Rome. He, he's trying to remind them that God has been good to us. He, he, he's trying to remind them, amen, what David said, had it not been for the Lord on my side. You ought to think about that for a moment. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? When the enemy would have came in like a flood, amen, for Jesus said that the thief come but to steal, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Whenever we talk about patience, amen, it is a virtue, amen, or a fruit of the spirit, amen, that here in America it is winding down. Have you noticed everybody seem like they are in a hurry to go nowhere, amen, only in the same routine, amen, but somehow they just don't have the patience to wait. My brothers and sisters, the church is in a critical season. There are unprecedented, amen, crises in every segment of the world and ungodly opinions and philosophies, amen, abound, uh, amen, with war over the truth. Amen. The truth is being held as an idea depending on how you think. But I want us to understand, amen, that 
uh, whenever we talk about Jesus, you can rest assured, amen, that the name of Jesus is growing unpopular. Whenever, amen, there is a social change, there's a legislative change, amen, which means they produce legal laws, amen, to introduce what they know is corrupt and wrong, amen, and then society goes along with it. Wish I could get some help up in here. We may need to cultivate patience in our lives, uh, but God doesn't. Patient, a man, is a part of God's character. Do, do you all remember recalling hearing me saying, a man, that I, I'm trying my best to become what God is already by his nature, a man, and whatever God is, that's what I want to be like. Anybody ever heard the song God is? Yeah. And, and, and truly we can understand that God must be really a patient God to put up with some of us. We, we, we look at America now, amen, and the division and the turmoil that is around us, amen, and she calls us, amen, to get on our knees to pray, amen. There was a time when family loves family, amen. Discrimination always exists, amen, but here, amen, in a life, amen, of families, we got to exist and coexist together. Whenever we talk about God, amen, we talk about a God who is self-existing without beginning and without end, amen. There is no searching of the Lord. The Bible says that he's Alpha and Omega, amen. And whenever you look, whether you look to the east, amen, or to the west, amen, you look up or you look down, you see the handprints of God. Oh, I wish I had a church, amen, who wanted to praise the Lord. It is here, brothers and sisters, amen, but God's patience is often neglected. Amen. And teaching the church, amen, uh, to experience loss, amen, whenever we don't acknowledge that God has been patient with us. Old school parents, amen, had very little patience. You, you, you ask some of the senior saints, amen, who can remember way back, amen, their, their patience, amen, wasn't long. If they told you to do something, you had to do it right away. And so here now, amen, as we look to the word of God, ah, we ought to have gratitude, amen, for the patience of God, for God's patience, amen, is magnificent and matchless, amen, that we simply, amen, cannot comprehend. I don't know how it is, amen, that the Lord has put up with me for the age that I am now. Oh, y'all, y'all looking at me, y'all are looking in the mirror at yourself, amen. I have not been good all my life. And the Bible says, while we were yet, when we were yet without strength, amen, that Christ died for the ungodly. When I wasn't thinking about God, amen, wasn't thinking about going to church, amen, doing my own thing, amen, God had mercy on me. I know y'all been saved all, I know y'all been saved all your little pretty life, amen, but God had mercy on me. Amen. When I was tore up from the floor, amen, sometimes didn't know how I got home, amen, and didn't know where my car was. God had to have mercy on me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I know some of you all never drunk anything, but you told you one of the biggest lies. So sin is sin, no matter who it's in. And the Bible says, oh, have sin. Come short of the glory of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Y'all want me to preach a pretty sermon with Daniel's coming out of the line then. But I, I'm not, I'm talking about the patience of God. We, we look at our society now and I would ask the question, can the family be saved? The institution of marriage, amen, is being threatened, amen, when a family is no longer, amen, a man and a woman and children, amen. Uh, what they are saying is consistent of now, it could be, amen, two men and two women. When the Bible clearly says from the beginning, he that made them, made them male and female. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. And here now, from this text, God, if Paul is trying to write to the church at Rome to allow them to know that God is never said to be patient about things or circumstances. Why? It is because he knows all things. Can I get a witness up in here? Scripture teaches us, amen, that he knows the beginning from the end. 
Bible says he knows your down sitting and he knows your uprising. Amen. He knows your nastiness and when your thoughts are far off. Anybody in here ever, other than me ever thought wrong? I know you have. Amen. And uh, uh, you wonder where the thought came from. Amen. But just as sure if you don't put something good in your mind, something evil will come to your mind also. Ah, uh, God does not have any need of that kind of patience. That is the kind of patience, amen, that we need, amen, about circumstances. When we speak of the patience of God, we are not talking about enduring hard times. Uh, we are not talking about, amen, just enduring difficulties. But it is when we are talking about being long-suffering, amen, and having forbearance towards people. Some of us know if we were to tell the truth, amen, if God had not showed us mercy, he would have cut us off a long time ago. Long time. If we were in the hand of men, amen, and men had the knowledge that we've done wrong, amen, they are so quick, amen, not only to persecute you, amen, but amen, they'll take you to the authority. Ah, uh, my brothers and sisters, we must understand that patience is the capacity to accept to tolerate, amen, to delay trouble, amen, suffering, amen, without getting angry or upset. Most time when people are losing their, their patience, amen, uh, you can see it on their face. You ever watch somebody talk, amen, they got more wrinkles in their face, amen, than on a road map. Mouth is saying one thing, but their face is saying another. Y'all ain't gonna help me out up in here. But, 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 pay, I mean, amen, but patience is able, amen, just to sit back and kind of wait it out. David said, wait on the Lord and be of a good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Every one of us here today, amen, have had a situation, amen, where it looked like I can't take no more. You're hanging by a thread, amen, and teetering on the edge, amen, and oh, amen, you're getting upset, amen, but when I call on the name of the Lord, whenever, amen, we talk about the patience of God, it is that God has so much tolerance. God has so much restraint. Not only that, God has self-control and then the book said in chapter number four from romans a man that god is a god of forbearance don't you know brothers and sisters a man that god is the one who is offended by sin the bible said that in the beginning when he created adam and eve made them perfect amen put them in a perfect environment amen in a perfect situation but when sin came into the picture, it violated the very nature and the conscience of God. It is here from this text, amen, that even in the midst of sin, amen, the one who is greatly offended by it, amen, he exhibits throughout Old and New Testament, amen, in the lives of his people, amen, that I am a God of forbearance. Text tell us, amen, there are a number of other words for patience in the Bible. The prophet says, amen, that God is slow to anger, greatly patient, yet he will not leave the guilty unpunished. In other words, the Bible is saying, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man or woman sow, that shall you also reap. He that sow it to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. For he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. I wish I had somebody to pray for me up in here. It is from this text, amen, that we must understand that God will always punish wickedness. I don't know truthfully what's happening in and to America. But brothers and sisters, I sense there's a change in the atmosphere. Whenever, amen, you get leaders, amen, of great stature and educated, amen, that cannot get along, who do not, amen, are, are willing to understand the purpose of their calling, amen, to yield, amen, a peaceful nation, amen, and protection and security for people, something is wrong. It is here now, amen, that we must understand that God has his own timetable. 
And whenever, amen, God draws the line, you can best believe, amen, that something, amen, that we don't expect is going to happen. Here now in this text, we talk about, amen, the context of, of the word slow to anger. It means that God sometimes shows restraint. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that the Lord has not judged me according to my foolishness, my slowfulness, or my slackness, amen, but he has saw fit to let the blood still run wrong in my vein. He could have cut me off a long time ago, but God with his good self. Thank you, Lord. It is here now when we talk about God's patience uh, that tells us that God is steadfast. Uh, whenever we understand, amen, that somehow and some way we've come short, amen, but God still showed us mercy. It is here, amen, that we understand that there's a perseverance about God, amen, where it shows that when God has patience, he's trying to help us, amen, endure in the race. God, amen, if he wanted to, can cause immediate judgment for sin, such as he did with Ananias and Sapphira. Huh? You all do recall, amen, in New Testament scripture out of the book of Acts, amen, when the apostles were praying, amen, and the people sold their property. Huh? But, the, amen, Ananias and Sapphira got together. Huh? They, amen, came among themselves, amen, to say, look. I know what God requires, but are we only going to give what we want to? So when they came through the line, they could have told, amen, the apostles, say, yeah, look, we sold for so much, but we are only going to give so much. But most of the time, we hold back and lie to God. So the amen, the apostle asked them, asked Ananias, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? And he fell dead right in place. His wife came along, being privy to the same conversation, fell dead also under the judgment of God. Huh? Can I get a witness up in here? Huh? It is here now, brothers and sisters, amen, that God has a sovereign purpose. Huh? It is what we call systematic theology. Huh? God is trying huh, to give us a chance to get it right. Huh? He's trying to allow the whole world to come to repentance that they might hear the gospel. Amen. For John 3.16 huh, said that God so loved the world huh, that he gave his only begotten son huh, that who was whosoever believeth in him uh, shall be saved. Uh, God wants to save a nation. Uh, but here in this text, uh, three words we ought to get uh, as I get ready to go and take my seat. Uh, one thing I think about uh, when Paul writes to the church at Rome. Uh, Rome, amen. The church at Rome was blessed. Uh, Rome was a great city. Uh, had great water uh, resorts. Uh, amen. Commerce coming in and out. Uh, the ships could go and come. Uh, had great buildings and commerce amen and buying and selling right near the water I don't know why it is but when God start to prosper us when God amen start to show us favor we get a little bit beside ourselves but I heard David in the Psalms in Psalms 24 I'm trying to go to my seat he said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein are cattle on the thousand hills they belong to my God but when I look at verse number four huh, in second chapter huh, of the book of Romans. Huh, it is from here huh, that God huh, is trying to show us mercy huh, in Ecclesiastes. Huh, it says new mercies huh, every morning huh, I receive. Huh, when you get up huh, you can inhale. Huh, you can exhale. Huh, it's a blessing from God. Huh, you're not in the hospital. Huh, you don't have COVID-19. Huh, it shows you huh, that God huh, has been good to us. Uh, can I get a witness up in here? Uh, and number two, uh, the word that comes from this text uh, tells us uh, of the patience of God. Uh, you all don't realize uh, how close uh, you've been to COVID. Uh, I don't realize uh, how close I've been, uh, but God, uh, he's been my keeper. Uh, he is my refuge uh, and my strength, uh, a very present help uh, in the time of trouble. Uh, can I get a witness up in here uh, as I get ready? Uh, 
uh, to take my seat. Uh, oh my God, uh, it is here from this text uh, that the third word uh, that Paul uses uh, is grace. Uh, grace, uh, the unmerited favor uh, that we don't deserve, uh, that God has shown to us. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, oh my God, uh, help me somebody. Uh, you don't know uh, how blessed you are uh, to have the grace uh, of God in your life, uh, that unmerited favor uh, that you don't deserve. Uh, many times uh, the blessings uh, that we receive uh, is not because uh, we've been good uh, and certainly not uh, because we've done everything right uh, but it's been because uh, of the Lord uh, on our side. Uh, can I get a witness up in here? Uh, God's grace uh, woke me up this morning. Uh, God's grace uh, started me uh, on my way. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, had it not uh, been for the grace uh, of the living God, uh, where would I be uh, when I had never uh, lost my mind? Uh, I heard uh, the word of God say, uh, whose mind uh, is set on him, uh, he'll keep you uh, in perfect peace. Uh, the grace of God uh, is not like man. Uh, but the songwriter said, uh, he looked uh, beyond my faults uh, and saw all of my needs. Uh, when I think uh, of the goodness uh, of Jesus uh, and all uh, that the Lord uh, has done for me, uh, Something on the inside Cry forth to the outside Oh, 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 what a change in my life My God, my God, he's been my helper He's been my keeper Kept my mind, kept my body, kept my soul He's keeping me I'm so glad for God patience uh, when folk uh, gave up on me uh, God uh, with his good self uh, he told me uh, you can make it uh, hold on uh, to God's uh, unchanging hand uh, if it's trouble uh, hold on uh, hold on uh, for you have to have uh, the patience of Job uh, as I get ready uh, to go to my seat uh, the Bible said uh, you have you seen uh, the patience of Job uh, oh Lord uh, Job Oh, uh, was sick uh, almost to death uh, sores uh, all over his body uh, hurting uh, hurting uh, some of you all uh, have never hurt uh, but when you hurt uh, and you really hurt uh, when you cry uh, and can't cry no more when you don't uh, know what to do uh, I heard uh, the psalmist say uh, I'm gonna look uh, I'm gonna look uh, I'm gonna look uh, I'm gonna look uh, I'm gonna look, uh, I'm gonna look uh, to the hills which come in uh, my help. Uh, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. My help. The patience of God. Aren't you glad that God is patient? Folks will write you off in a heartbeat. But I hear the Lord say, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And let me tell you all something. You all that got children and grandchildren and us got children and grandchildren. You better ask the Lord to give you some patience with them. Stop being so devilish mean. You had to grow up. Let them grow up. If you don't want to lose them, you better get on the page with them. Show them the love of God. I say to families, tell each other you love one another while you can. Because you know not what the next day hold. You can be up today and out of here today. And folk won't care too soon about you. And life will still go on. But I'm glad for the patience of God. You ever, do you ever get to the stoplight and somehow you're daydreaming now? I know you all are not on your cell phone at the stoplight. I'm just trusting that, but, and because you didn't see the light change, they get on their horn, almost tear the horn up. And then they'll pass you and get off right at the next street. Folk don't have patience, but I am so glad for the patience of God. 
All right, I'm getting ready to let you go. You're here today. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin. All that means you are not saved. You have not accepted Christ as your Savior. You need to come today. You might be a backslide. Now, everybody in church ain't saved. Don't kid yourself. We play church. We hack church. But we better seek the Lord God. Christ Jesus is on his way back. All right, let's pray. We're going to pray anyway. Amen. Brother O.B., is all right if I pray? All right, he says I could pray. All right, I'm going to pray anyway if you didn't say it. Amen. Let, let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you now for this word that has come from the second chapter of Romans to the people of God. You share with us, God, how patient you've been, how long-suffering, and which more forbearance you have worked with us. God, we thank you for your mercy and for your love. You thank, we thank you for your presence your power and your protection. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Thank you for keeping us in the midst of this pandemic. Amen. Gas prices are high, food prices are high, everything is high. But God, you are high and you're sitting low. Amen, you look low. Thank you for your mercy and for your love. Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for this word that has come. We give you glory. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, present your faultless at the presence of his coming with exceeding joy. To him, the only wise God, our Savior, be them in your majesty, power, and might, now henceforth and forevermore. And let everyone say amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. All right, go in peace. Enjoy your week and serve the Lord.